Hey, it's Mike here, and today we're looking at a recent massive study on the risk of various digestive cancers in terms of plant-based or meat-based dietary patterns. We're talking about things like pancreatic cancer and colorectal cancer and stomach cancer, all the fun stuff. That got me especially curious about the pancreatic cancer results because I have heard people say, oh, well, Steve Jobs was vegan and he died of pancreatic cancer, so I could never go vegan. So we're gonna see if that is a valid concern by getting to know the study and what they did, what the results were for different cancers. And we're also gonna look at the mechanisms that the researchers put forth for the results. And yes, they did particularly look at plant-based versus vegan. We'll cover all of that. Let's go. And two things really quickly. I probably sound a little bit nasally because I just got over a little cold. And then also, I'm filming on a new camera. I don't know if you can tell the difference, but this old one, my G7's little thing was breaking and couldn't really, where the screen basically stopped working and, and this button was taped for years, so I, I went to a G9. But back on topic, it is worth mentioning for some background that colorectal cancer is the number three most deadly cancer in the US, so this is clearly something that we wanna prevent and I'm very sorry to anybody that has to deal with any of these cancers. But in terms of colorectal cancer, we did just have a medical breakthrough. You could click the link below to read about this treatment, which is very inspiring and hopeful, but of course, we wanna prevent getting it in the first place, which brings us to lifestyle decisions. And that brings us to the main study, this one, which was published a couple weeks ago by Chinese researchers in the journal Frontiers in Public Health. Sorry to get really personal on this one, but I'm like one semester away from actually getting my master's in public health finally, so yay. And it was a meta-analysis, which many of you are becoming more and more familiar with. Again, it was huge with three million people, which is quite ridiculous. And so we have to ask, of course, what did they mean by plant-based? How did the study define that? Plant-based in this context was a hodgepodge of a bunch of different sort of plant-based diets, as you know, they always have mostly plant-based in there, so it does include animal products in terms of the definition of plant-based, but in terms of numbers of studies at 14, vegan is the most. They've then added things like Mediterranean diet, DASH diet, lacto-ovo-vegetarian, and some others. But let's just get to the results now for the overarching results, we can zoom out and look at all of the cancers combined that are digestive, and then we will look at specific cancers. And as they say, quote, subgroup analyses demonstrated that the plant-based diets reduced the risk of cancers. Lower risk, love it. And to look at the actual percentage, it's important to look at the different types of studies that they looked at, and that was two types, cohort and case control. Cohort is where they are following a group of people and making lifestyle measurements and then seeing what happens. So future looking, and then we have case control where they find people who have cancer cases and people who don't control, and then they look back on what lifestyle factors they had. And looking at those two types of studies within the meta-analysis, we're talking about a 20-ish or 30% reduction in all digestive cancers under the plant-based umbrella here. And that's after they controlled for things like bias by the authors in certain studies, like maybe those Adventists really wanted plant-based diets to look good while they controlled for things like that. And these results are of course huge if I do say so. But let's look at those specific diseases, which of course could be really relevant for people with a family history, et cetera. I'll just lay them out. We have, for some examples, pancreatic cancer was at 0.71 and 0.65 risk, depending on the type of study. So that's like 35% lower. Colorectal cancer was very comparable at about 30% lower. Stomach cancer, very variable, 0.81 or 0.58 for the case control. I'm not sure what the disparity was there at all, but hey, in one of those situations, 40% lower cancer, that is quite remarkable. Anyway, moving on, we have finally liver cancer was at about 0.61 for both types of studies, so 40% lower. And that makes me wonder why it was so much lower, and that brings us to mechanisms, which was a massive section in the discussion of this. And the first one that I wanna mention that's interesting has to do with the microbiome. The researchers say that polyphenols, which are a type of antioxidants, and unsaturated fats increase the abundance of bifidobacterium and lactobacillus in the intestine, 
which inhibit gastrointestinal inflammation and carcinogenic effects by promoting the production of short chain fatty acids. We love those SCFAs. Sukfa, sukfa, what does it say short chain fatty acid? And bifidobacterium's really relevant today because we are going to be taking a quick break with today's sponsor, Seed Symbiotic, and I have a very interesting study spotlight from their page on a strain that they use. And for those that don't know, of course, Seed Symbiotic is a mix of a prebiotic and a probiotic, and it is specifically coded to make it through your digestive system, through your stomach acid, down to where it needs to be. It also has 53.6 billion active cell units from 24 different strains with science behind them and it's all coming to you on a monthly basis in super eco-friendly packaging. Now to that randomized control trial, it's super fascinating and has to do with immunity. What they did is they took healthy subjects that just went to some college campus and then they either gave them a certain strain of bifido that is in seed or a placebo and then they infected everybody with rhinovirus, you know, the most common virus behind the common cold. And the results suggest that taking that bifido strain lowers the inflammatory markers in your nasal passage at baseline of the study, and then had a modest effect on lowering the inflammatory response from the infection. And there's also appears to be an effect on rhinovirus replication in terms of decreased shedding of the virus from the nose. That's really fascinating, but don't get any ideas. It's not gonna like prevent an infection or anything like that. Cool stuff though. And of course, if you would like to try seed, you can click the link below and use the code Mike15, M-I-C-15 at checkout for 15% off your first month supply. All right, now let's get to some more mechanisms. We don't have to think super hard to of course make the connection for colorectal cancer and red and processed meats, which are, you know, class 2A and 1A carcinogens. And that has to probably cover most of the risk difference here, but not all of it. So let's go back to that discussion part of the paper where they say they have biologically plausible reasons for the results that they got. We're talking things like inflammation, oxidative stress, and insulin, which all affect the development of tumors. They briefly mention insulin-like growth factor one, which of course I've touched on a bunch because it fuels every stage of cancer and is boosted by animal protein. And moving on though, we have the positives of plants, some of which, most of which you've probably heard before. <laughs> We're talking about fiber, antioxidants, those sulfur compounds like broccoli's sulforaphane and cruciferous vegetables in general, which I should probably do a video on because I haven't mentioned much about them. And of course, those antioxidants and how they are beneficial against cancer. And for an interesting study that they highlighted, I know people aren't downing straight eggplant extract, but this study found that eggplant extract on human stomach cancer cells scavenged or sort of neutralized some of the free radicals quite well. Quote, therefore eggplant may be a protective food to reduce the incidence of cancer. We all love eggplants. There's an eggplant emoji joke in there somewhere that I won't make. Anyway, it's also worth mentioning that gastric or stomach cancer is associated with sodium intake. And so people on the DASH diet, for example, even though it was a small number of the studies, you know, that diet is particularly designed to lower blood pressure, lower sodium, et cetera. So that's an added effect. That's not necessarily animal associated, although processed meats are loaded with salt. And cheese is also loaded with salt, one that people forget often. Anyway, moving on. Now I wanna talk about the plant-based versus vegan risk for a second, because a lot of times I'm talking about a benefit of plant-based diets. Again, that's an umbrella term. It's not the same as vegan, but people will say, oh, well, you can't guarantee you'll get that same benefit for a vegan diet specifically without any animal products. Well, they actually looked at that comparison, as I mentioned earlier. They found that quote, the correlation between vegan and other plant-based diets was compared using Z tests and the results showed no difference. So the vegan diets trended lower in terms of overall risk than the other diets generally did, but it wasn't statistically significantly different from the other diets. So we'll call it all the same. And to this point, they say specifically that this is a reason that you don't have to go vegan. You don't have to go 100% plant-based to lower your risk here. 
And I would say yes for this particular set of diseases. However, there are a ton of diseases from the obesity to diabetes and on and on that have sort of a spectrum of severity where vegan is the lowest. So it's not just one type of disease that you look at for that. And real quick, you might be wondering about the funding and it is funded by the Taishan Scholar Foundation of Shandong Province in China. Is this the newest big broccoli industry shell corporation that funds the evil vegan agenda? No, I could not find any indication of that. However, I am not great at doing Chinese language research. Ni hao ma, ni shui bu dong kua. Oh, sorry, you weren't, you weren't supposed to see that and my connection to the Chinese cabal of vegetables. Now I wanna talk really briefly about the health impact that it would have if more people were on a plant-based diet and of course, this is observational data, it's correlation, it can't determine causation. However, we have some strong indications for causation in particular for colorectal cancer. So that relationship has been established. That ship has sailed. But if we are just talking about colorectal cancer, you know, in the US, over 50,000 people are expected to die in the year 2022. So this would bring that down to somewhere between 35 and 40,000 deaths, which would be quite a nice improvement. And that's an average of $60,000 in costs per case, not counting some downstream effects, which is ridiculous. I mean, people should not have to pay that much when they also have cancer. Sorry to get a little like political here, but I can imagine that somebody's death rate is probably even gonna be lower not having the stress of going bankrupt on top of that. Topic for another video. Anyway, in the end, eating a plant-based diet or vegan diet specifically lowers the risk of all digestive cancers considerably. This is very compelling to me. You know, this was one of the reasons that I stopped eating meat and other animal products in the first place. So it's cool to just have my bias confirmed stamp now, as they say, the theoretical mechanisms all line up. It would be awesome to have a randomized control trial in this area, but in terms of real humans over long periods of time with cancer, that's really unlikely to happen. So this is the best we got. No meat eaters, you cannot wiggle out of this one. Your meat logic don't wiggle, wiggle. It folds. I like to see you jiggle, jiggle. No, I don't. Anyway, that's probably too much TikTok watching to have that song stuck in my head. But if you also want to check out C to get some of those Bifido benefits and other benefits from strains they have in there, then again, you can click the link below and use the code Mike15 for 15% your first month supply at checkout. And of course, feel free to let me know down below what you think about this research, like and subscribe, all that good stuff. And also thanks to the Patreon supporters for helping me out with things like this. It's huge and see you next time.